distance flow formula in uniform flow. Well, uh, first let me go to the very basic concept of uniform flow formula. Well, <coughs> again when we say uniform flow formula, we always talk it in terms of mean velocity of flow. That is why we are talking that uniform flow formula for mean velocity of flow. That means, by this formula or by this particular formula, uh, what we are trying? We are trying to express the average velocity of the flow in a reach. Suppose, in a reach the flow is uniform in that reach, what is the average velocity of flow or mean velocity of flow? And that we are trying to express in terms of some other channel parameter. Now, which are the parameters that are important and which are the parameters that is influencing the flow? Let us see one by one. Well, and as this relation of velocity is basically derived from the concept that resistance offered is equal to the driving force. So, this formula is also called resistance flow formula, uniform flow formula. Well, now we can have a general expression for this resistance flow formula. For example, say when we talk about mean velocity v, then this mean velocity v, you can say that this will be proportional to the hydraulic radius r means if hydraulic radius is more proportional means I am not talking that directly proportional or something like that. If the hydraulic radius is more for a wide rectangular channel earlier we did discuss that for a wide rectangular channel this hydraulic radius is nothing but it becomes equivalent to the depth. So, when depth is more basically hydraulic radius become more uh, then uh, so this velocity will be more in that case. And in if the slope of the channel, slope of the channel s is more, then also the velocity is more. Of course, how this v is related to r or how this velocity is related to s is a very critical question. So, uh, in general we can say that this is related with an exponent x and say with an exponent y. So, velocity can be said as proportional to hydraulic radius to the power x and it can be said as proportional to slope base slope to the power y. Of course, when we are saying base slope in uniform flow, we should remember one point that in uniform flow say uh, this is our depth. So, everywhere our depth is same everywhere our depth is same and that is why velocity is also same velocity is also same and because of that the energy or the kinetic energy also equal. So, if I add some kinetic energy component here and if I join this line then we did discuss earlier that this is the energy slope or friction slope this is the energy slope or we can call friction slope and this is the bit slope here this is the kinetic energy component and then we can see that as all these are equal. So, for uniform flow actually the bit slope is equal to the friction slope bit slope is equal to the friction slope ok. And the formula as such we can express finally as that the mean velocity of flow is equal to some coefficient c multiplied by r to the power x and slope to the power y. And this slope is of course, we talk about bed slope and in fact, this bed slope is equal to friction slope in case of uniform flow. Well, now <coughs> as these exponent and this coefficient uh, different, we need to uh, know and uh, no uh, definite analytical relation is there to derive this expression explicitly. The reason is that uh, say depending on the bed roughness, depending on the side roughness, this x value can be different and the coefficient 
can be different and this coefficient c can be different. So, different investigators carried out experiment in the laboratory as well as they took some observed value of field. So, some uh, did experiment extensive experiment and then observed value of the field were also taken and that way uh, considering all these information all this experience different investigators suggested uh, different value for this coefficient and as such uh, based on this value of coefficient we get several resistance flow formula or uniform flow formula. Now, the question is that which formula we should use or uh, which formula is better. Well, now to know that it is better if we go to the history of uh, development of resistance flow formula and that is why uh, let us discuss some uh, at least some of the important formula that were developed and uh, that were in use uh, from and uh, say long back say it started in 1769. Well, we can say this first formula for resistance formula was developed in the in France and it is a French engineer Antoine Chezy. This name is very popular in hydraulic engineering the Chezy's formula it is known as Chezy's formula. Well, this Antoine Chezy, uh, he gave the formula as V is equal to that is the velocity is equal to a coefficient C and R to the power half. That means, in his formula this x value this coefficient is half and then S to the power half. So, both x and y that the exponent are having the value half. We can write it as C root over R s. This is the very uh, popular and commonly used expression of Chezy's formula. Well, but uh, for this formula in fact, we can have some analytical basis also. Of course, we cannot exactly derive why it is half or these things or if we can derive why it is half, then we need to have some assumption in that. But anyway, we can have some uh, analytical basis that how this formula is coming. Okay? Well, let me just go to some of this analytical basis. Well, for that we make some assumption, we make some assumption. Okay? That assumption is that the mean velocity of flow is V m suppose and then the resistance force now, when we are saying resistance force, then always we are talking that it is the resistance offered from the side of the channel and bed of the channel. Okay? So, that means we can call that resistance force per unit area, per unit surface area of resistance force, we can assume that it is proportional to the velocity square what we can say that resistance force per unit area resistance force per unit area is proportional to the mean velocity square. That means, uh, resistance force as such will not say that it is a fixed quantity. Okay? Suppose, the given the surface, given the surface, uh, this is the general convention of frictional formula that is given the surface, if you are trying to move in a high speed then resistance offered will also increase. So, it increases the square of the velocity. This is the assumption is being made. So, if I write this small forces as say <coughs> d f f, f means I am writing as frictional force and d is just a symbol I am using to represent that it is a small forces per unit area this can be written as equal to some coefficient say k and v m square because it is proportional to v m square. Well, then uh, writing this we can write that say 
let me draw a channel let me draw a channel of this type <coughs> this is the channel say we are talking about a channel reach between this section to that section where the flow is uniform okay and the sectional area is suppose this one sectional area is suppose this one okay <coughs> then total resistance force f f let me write it so total resistance force f f will be equal to this is the resistance force per unit area. So, total resistance force will definitely be equal to the total surface area that is in contact. Suppose, if I take this section like that, okay, then if this length is L, if this length is L and this perimeter is from here to here is P suppose, perimeter is P then what we can write the surface area will be p into l this is what l is so p into l into the k v m square that is our total surface area multiplied by the resistance force per unit area so we are getting the frictional resistance well now uh, what is our basic relation we know that uh, for uniform flow condition that <coughs> this resistance force must be equal to the force guiding the flow or driving the flow and that is nothing but equal to this is suppose w weight of this and this length is nothing but this length and if we put this sectional area as a we are talking about some simple situations that this A is continuous here and we are having the same sectional area or say we can talk in terms of considering average sectional area of this particular portion and then suppose we can write. So, what will be the weight of this particular component? It will be say this sectional, what is the volume? Say sectional area multiplied by the length, this sectional area multiplied by the length, this will give me the volume this will give me the volume and then uh, weight is equal to say actually mass is equal to rho we, we need to multiply this by rho and then to weight we multiply it by g so and this rho g we can write as w a l this is the unit weight so unit weight into a into l this is the unit weight but this will be the vertical uh, component then there is actually we are talking about the force in this direction so if this angle is theta then our interest is this force our interest is this force force in the direction force acting in the gravity force component of gravity force acting in the direction of flow so this is what our interest well so this force we can write as fg that we can write as w a l into sin theta because we are talking about this direction. Okay. Uh, now, let me go to the next slide that this uh, here we can make some assumption that sin theta if it is very small, sin theta if it is very small. Now, why these analytical derivation is important because once we do this analytical derivation and then we will be knowing that where we have made some assumption and when we know that where we have made some assumption and then we know that what are the limitation of this formula. Well, so what we are getting that F F frictional force we, we are getting as say P L K V M square and then the disturbing force or driving force that I am writing as F G suppose that we got as W A L sin theta. Now, for very small value of theta, for small value of theta we know that we can express 
sin theta for small value of theta we can write sin theta can be approximated as theta. So, what is theta? This theta is nothing but the slope s. Okay. We can write it as s b, it is the slope, bit slope. So, this equation can be written now as say f g is equal to w a l into s b. Okay. So, this equation is suppose 2 and this equation we can write as 1. So, what we can have for the balance from the force balance what we can have force balance what we can have that f f is equal to f g. Okay. Now, when f f is equal to f g we can write that p l k v m square is equal to w a l s p. Okay. Now, our interest is to find out what this p m is. So, let me write it as say v m square is equal to this l and l are getting cancelled then we can write say w by k and then a by p intentionally I am grouping it like that a by p into say s b. Okay. Well, from that what we can have that p m is equal to p m is equal to we can write taking root on both side we can have root over say w by k and a by p then say s b. Okay. Now, if we write this root over w by k, if we write this root over w by k as equal to c because this is a uh, this is the unit weight of water and this k is a uh, proportionality constant that we did use earlier. So, we can express this as a single constant and we can write that v m is equal to c then root over a by p is nothing but r and then s p what we are basically writing c is equal to root over w by k. We are placing c as equal to w by k. Okay. So, of course, uh, uh, saying so, but it is not uh, uh, it is not the point that okay, we have analytical basis. So, we can do it without experimentation. It is not like that because the k value will be how much that we do not know. We know w value of course, but the k value we do not know. So, that means, this coefficient c what we are having here we do not know the value of this c. So, we need to carry out experiment to know this value know what will be the value of c for different roughness for different uh, conditions. Well, so that way uh, this is how we can derive this uh, value and in this case always we should remember that when we are talking about this sort of formula which are derived empirically that means, based on some observation whether it is uh, laboratory observation, whether it is field observation, but these are derived on the basis of some observed value. Then we are fixing suppose we know the uh, r we are observing that hydraulic radius value what is we know the s b value then we are observing what velocity we are finding and we have series of data of that kind and then with all those value we are putting and we are finding what the value of c. Now, we are giving a numerical value of c, we are giving a numerical value of c. And so, suppose we are suggesting that if the channel roughness is of this type, suppose it is a uh, bouldery channel then c value is this, if it is a channel with vegetation c value is this, well if it is a curved channel then it is like that. So, different way we can give this c value 
but as when when we are putting a c value in this empirical formula a numerical value we are putting so this value will always depend on the value of I mean, numerical value of this velocity that we are observing numerical value of this hydraulic radius that we are observing numerical value of this s b or bed slope that we are observing of course s b is not dependent on the unit that is whether we consider in feet or meter it does not matter as b is as b it is dimensionless. But about this r and about this velocity it is meter per second its unit is in it can be meter per second of course it can be feet per second uh, so different unit can be there similarly hydraulic radius can be meter or it can be feet different and if we put different value of this hydraulic radius if we put different value for this bm I mean different unit then this coefficient value will be different. So, when we use this sort of empirical formula with some coefficient then always we should be careful in mentioning the unit. So, normally we do uh, derive these things in metric unit and then the value of c we say that this is the value of c for this sort of condition this sort of channel and in metric unit. Well, with this uh, very basic of the stages formula then uh, similar uh, uh, similar condition or similar approaches can be made with different assumption and some formula can be derived and let me go to some other formula that were derived uh, uh, by different investigator well and extensive study in fact first it was started in 1769 Chesi started in 1769 long back now it is 2007 so it was started long back now since then since then i mean this formula was used for different engineering works but later on then from 1855 to 1862 1855 to 1862 series of experiments were carried out series of experiments were carried out to see that if a better formula can be developed if a better formula can be developed if a more uh, say general formula can be developed so that way that sort of experiments were started and it was initiated by h darcy uh, in in 1855 and then it was completed by beijing I and mean, this sort of experiment were uh, done and then of course completed means beyond that also people are doing and in I mean one from this experimental observation Bezin in 1865 he proposes one formula. So, Bezin proposes one formula basically this formula he gave as 1 by c square is equal to a plus b by r well that means <coughs> what he was doing we already know that b is equal to c root over r s c root over r s now what should be the value of c in this regard uh, they did work and then they express this c value in terms of some other parameter a and b and again this a and b depends on the wall roughness this a and b parameter depends on the wall roughness ok. So, <coughs> uh, this formula is was given and then because say they could know about this value a and b for some of the material they could know and then they could see that this c says is c what was given by says that c can be expressed in terms of the a and b and they are more confident in using this value. So, that way this is one approach that was carried out and then the work uh, went on and in, nine, in 1869 uh, knowing the history is important in 1869 Swiss engineer Ganguillet and Cutter Ganguillet and Cutter they expresses C they expresses C in terms of S that is the bed slope then in terms of hydraulic radius r 
and they did use another roughness coefficient they did use another roughness coefficient they call that coefficient as n well uh, this is called uh, cutters n ok so <coughs> in metric unit this formula is expressed actually their formula is also for expressing this c value that is the Cezy c coefficient that is expressed as say 23 plus 1 by n plus then it was like this 0 0.00155 divided by s this s is nothing but the bit slope then 1 plus 23 plus 0 0.00155 divided by s and then it was n by root over r n by root over r ok. So, this formula was given by them here again they did use one um, uh, say empirical value that is n and this is known as cutters n. Uh, well, this was uh, it is became very much popular and it was used for channel design and many other purposes and then but still work went on and then in 1897 in 1897 ace Beijing, ace Beijing uh, he developed another formula for expressing for expressing the cesis c so all were basically the very basic concept that's why we started with the analytical concept of the cesis formula so that is always remaining same and what people are trying that they are trying to give the expression for the value of c so that uh, they can get the value of c based on some of the uh, value which is known in a much better way in a particular area for because the c value depends on lot of other factors so that way people are trying and then this he gave this formula that c is equal to say 157.6 divided by 1.81 plus m by root over r again uh, he introduced another empirical value m and this empirical value m depends on roughness of the channel so uh, coming to the same point again this m again depends on the roughness of the value but uh, this formula was not that much uh, popular like that of uh, ganguliet and cotter's formula uh, but still it was used in some uh, region and then uh, finally i would like to use the word finally because uh, since 1889 since 1889 uh, since 1889 of course this this you can see the difference is not that much here it was given and this parallelly went on then uh, see once a formula is developed somewhere and to get it spread uh, all over the world and to be used uh, then it takes some time so it doesn't mean that uh, this formula suppose it was developed in 1897 and it was developed in 1889 uh, so it doesn't mean uh, that uh, this is uh, say a later formula is better it is not like that anyway uh, <coughs> so uh, this formula that it is engineer robert mennings uh, this mennings formula is now very very popular it is used uh, very widely and this mennings formula was developed by Iris engineer in 1889 and he gave this formula as that mean velocity of flow v m is equal to 1 by n that is he did introduce another parameter that is the roughness coefficient n hydraulic radius remaining same but the power of hydraulic radius is not half here it is 2 by 3 that is he did change the exponent here 1 by n r to the power 2 by 3 and s to the power half exponent of 
s is remaining same, but the exponent of hydraulic radius is changing. Well, and Manning's had lot of follower, Manning's had lot of follower and this formula is becoming widely used. Nowadays also when we use uh, this uh, uniform flow, then we talk about Manning's formula. One very basic reason is that for different material, for different material we have value for this n. Say if uh, we just think that a wooden channel, okay, a wooden channel. That means maybe in the laboratory level or maybe in some factory we have a channel where the lining is of wood. Then if we say that okay, if we use Chedi's formula, what will be the value of C? Or if we use another formula, Ganguelet and Kutcher formula, what will be the value of C there? Uh, then it will be difficult. But if we try to use Manning's formula, we have a well-established value for this roughness coefficient n even for wood. If we try to know that what will be the value of n for grass, yes, it is there. What will be the value for n in uh, say, uh, say glass that is also known. So, that way for different material series of experiments were conducted and for different material the value of n is available. And as the value of n is available, it is used very widely. And of course, uh, <coughs> using this formula, we can go ahead towards uh, some other aspect of computation of open channel flow. But before going to computation of open channel flow, that means uh, once we know the hydraulic radius and once we know the slope, we can compute what is the velocity and then we can do some other computation. But before that, we need to know although the n value as I have just told in a simple way that uh, it is available for different material. But again, in the same material, in the same material depending on different condition, depending on different condition, uh, this n value may be different, this n value may be different. Well, to uh, just have a look into this thing that is we need to discuss this point that is factor affecting Manning's m. What are the factors that affect the Manning's roughness coefficient m? This is called Manning's roughness coefficient. Okay. Now, first is definitely the name itself. It is said that roughness. Roughness is the first. And if you just see, uh, if you just concentrate in the slide, you can see that this channel here we have alluvial. Uh, soil and so resistance will be of different type. Here we have vegetation on the side. Here we are not talking about vegetation inside the water, but on the side we have vegetation. Here we have say boulder, bouldery bed and side. And here we have a lining here. Here we have a concrete lining. So, uh, depending on the roughness of the side and the bed, the meanings and will be different. More the roughness definitely more will be the resistance. Well, and then suppose here if I draw in a channel say roughness not only means this thing. So, this is a roughness and that is a roughness. Now, this gap between the suppose this height is same and here say this is the same height roughness, but closely packed closely packed. Okay. So, <coughs> here as the gap is more, the flow will behave in a different way. Say this is going like this and then total flow is this one, then flow separation will be there and it is again coming like that. But here it will be of different type. Well, now so depending on the spacing of the roughness, the channel may be like this in reality and channel may be like this, channel roughness, bed roughness. And depending on the characteristic of bed roughness, the Manning's formula n or the value of the Manning's roughness coefficient n will be different. So, a lot of things are there uh, which we need to study regarding the roughness of the bed and uh, say in fact, uh, some other facts are also there when we talk about two dimensional flow, when we talk about two dimensional flow in a bed, the roughness in roughness value in one direction and in other direction. Uh, in reality may be different. The flow if uh, the component is moving in the other direction and the roughness characteristic may be different in that direction. But uh, so that sort of complexities are there and and definitely um, uh, some work has been done in that line. And 
then factor affecting meanings and the second factor what we want to say is the vegetation. Well, here by vegetation we are not meaning that what sort of vegetations are there on the side. What we are meaning that uh, normally in our drains or in the natural river also we can have vegetation in the bed of the channel, underwater vegetation can be there. And of course, sometimes in, in Indian condition particularly we find that in the drains we have vegetation growing and then flow is moving through the uh, I mean through the vegetation and uh, then this the characteristic of this vegetation is what is the here I am showing one slide that is showing underwater vegetation it is a photograph from one river in the upper Assam area and it is called Subanshiri river and there you can see the vegetation uh, is there and this vegetation the flow is in this direction flow is in this direction and the vegetation is also inclined that means with the flow because of the flow velocity the vegetation is inclined in that direction. Now, when the flow is moving the vegetation is uh, just inclined in that direction that means the some energy has been consumed in moving the vegetation also. Vegetation is not getting removed from this part, but the top of the vegetation is inclined in this direction. So, some energy has been consumed say originally uh, without the flow vegetation may be like this. Now, when the flow is coming vegetation is moving like this. So, some energy is being consumed there. Well, so what is the height of this vegetation? What is the height of this vegetation? This sort of experimental study has also been carried out that how uh, the height of the vegetation uh, influences the meaning sand. Now, height of the vegetation and flexibility of the vegetation. If your vegetation is like that, uh, when the flow is moving, it cannot be banned or it, it requires more energy to get banned. So, like that depending on height of vegetation and the flexibility of the vegetation this resistance formula uh, in, in the resistance formula this roughness parameter n will be different. Okay? So, this is one factor that affect the roughness uh, that affect the uh, value of the uh, meaning's roughness coefficient. Then uh, some of the parameters other parameter that I am putting here you can concentrate in the slide that is the stays. Okay. The stays, <coughs> stays means basically depth of flow, stays means depth of flow. In the same channel, in the same channel if the depth of flow is this much, then suppose we are having some value of roughness coefficient n. Now, in the same channel if the depth increase, if the depth increase to this height, then the roughness value that is the n value for this one. Suppose, if I say n 1, I am not talking about please uh, just uh, uh, be clear that I am not talking about total resistance force. Resistance force will definitely be different because it is a small depth and your surface area in contact is less. So, that way total resistance force will definitely be different from this depth to that different depth, but I am not talking about the total resistance force. What I am talking about is that the value of the resistance parameter n itself is changing with the depth. Higher the depth, higher the depth, lower is the value of or smaller is the value of the n. In a channel that means uh, what we can understand, what is the physical significance of that? Suppose in a river, in a river we have observed we have observed the flow and then we have seen we have measured the even velocity and for the given bed condition bed material and given side material we have found that okay this can be the roughness coefficient n and that way uh, say we have seen that if a discharge q is coming if a discharge q is coming then for that discharge q using that roughness coefficient n we can calculate what will be the velocity of flow. Now, once we can calculate the velocity of flow we can also calculate what will be the depth of flow. Of course, these are interdependent that will be coming when we will go for computation of a functional flow, but uh, the physical significance we need to know that is given a discharge given an value we can find a depth of flow. Now, suppose 
using that depth of uh, uh, using that n value we are considering the high discharge is coming and for that high discharge a flood is coming so that for that flood what will be the depth we want to know so for that high discharge we are using this n value which we have observed maybe in the lean period or maybe because say observing this flow measuring this flow in the high flood period is not possible that will be very risky so what we do normally in the lean period or in the moderate period we go for measurement of these things and then we can have some idea about the n value well now in a high flood period suppose we are uh, as we know that from the hydrology or from statistical analogy of the analysis of the hydrological data we got that okay maximum discharge of this much can come and for this discharge we want to know what will be the depth of flow because we are interested in the point that whether there will be flooding or not for that discharge okay now say we have computed the discharge using the Manning's formula we are getting a higher depth fine but the n value what we are using or what we are using may not be actually the n value for that particular depth so when a high discharge is coming depth is increasing so n value will reduce and when n value reduces the things will change so that way i mean knowing this particular aspect that is how the n value get changed with the depth is significant and of course sometimes some interesting phenomenon occur we were carrying out one experimental study on open channel flow and that was uh, done in a field channel that was done in a field channel and but what we could observe that when the depth is increasing well you can concentrate in the slide that is when depth is increasing we could find that here our depth is this much and then we measured the velocity we measured the depth and we could compute what is the n value it was and then this is the uh, we made a field channel like this and then uh, we could see that up to certain distance yes it was following what is being stated that is with the increase of depth the n value is decreasing but when it was coming up to this mass then we were finding that well n value is increasing with the increase of depth n value was increasing so we got confused that why it has happened then the very basic reason was that there were some grass and some vegetation here and the roots of this vegetation were exposed to the site root of this vegetation were exposed to the site and when we are cutting these things up to certain depth this root of these vegetations are there so when depth is increasing once it is reaching this particular depth when it is coming in contact with the roots of the vegetation its roughness is increasing and that way we got the total roughness because when we get a roughness value this is basically we are talking about the average roughness so that roughness coefficient is was increasing so that uh, sort of uh, some uh, phenomenon can be there and when we are using this n value we should be aware of all those different consequences then let me talk about uh, another fact factor that influences the roughness coefficient this is silting and scouring this is silting and scouring well uh, in our earlier class we did discuss about silting and scouring uh, in a channel in a channel say due to because of this flow there can be sometimes deposition and silting that is the bed is sediment carried with the discharge get deposited and that we call as a silting so this is silting and then again in some cases again in some cases suppose we are uh, having some discharge and because of this discharge this is getting scored and this channel depth is increasing like that so this Manning's roughness coefficient decreases due to silting Manning's roughness coefficient decreases due to silting when there is a silting Manning's roughness coefficient decreases and when there is a scarring Manning's roughness coefficient increases so uh, when we talk about a channel whose bed is not lined then we should be careful in using the Manning's end because this sort of uh, when it is a silting case then it will be changing like that when it is a scouring case it will be uh, different and so only on the basis of material we cannot say then again 
another factor is channel alignment again another factor is channel alignment well now the channel will not be always say straight channel can be straight as well as channel can be curved so now say given the other condition same suppose the bed material or side materials are same and depth is also suppose same now given the other condition same whether our manning's roughness value n will be same here and here so more the curvature that you will find that more the curvature when your curvature is increasing your n value is increasing more the curvature more is the n value so uh, if we conduct some experiment in a straight channel so we are conducting some experiment in a straight channel and we are getting some value of the uh, meaning's roughness coefficient n and then uh, we are very much sure about the bed material and we are very much sure about the depth what it can be then in the practical field we are planning to apply this formula with this particular value of meaning's and what we have computed in the lab then in the real field if we see that okay the channel is maintaining other things same but the curvature is there then if this is a mild curvature then it's fine but if the curvature is uh, quite significant and we cannot ignore that then we need to increase the n value by some amount of course what we mean by some amount that definitely i cannot give you a numerical value that will depend on experience of course some standard value are there if curvature is increasing like that then we can increase the n value by some percentage so uh, this is there and experiment can also be conducted in fact in this aspect experiment can also be conducted and can be observed in the field also to get the uh, change in the n value then another point that we are talking about is the obstruction of flow obstruction of flow so all other things remaining same in a channel if we have a bridge suppose in a channel we have a bridge here now when we have a bridge there will be some piers in between and that's what there, there can be different type of obstruction in the flow now if there are some obstruction in the channel will the n value remain same definitely not that with obstruction with obstruction the n value will be changing well now here it is not uh, possible to generalize the thing because uh, obstruction may be of different type and depending on the type of obstruction the uh, n value will be changing accordingly so just we need to know at this level that meanings n get affected by the obstruction that is there in the flow <coughs> then there is another point that uh, type that is say uh, irregularity of the flow flow irregularity that we can say flow irregularity or we can call rather it is not flow irregularity it is better to say as channel irregularity it's a channel irregularity <coughs> oh yes it is written here i did uh, skip this point while it was explained here well channel irregularities so in a channel as we could see earlier also there can be sometimes some uh, ups and down in the there can be some hump like this uh, say there can be some hump like this <coughs> in a channel the bed will not be like that rather say it is going this way there is some hump like that rising of the things and there can be some deeper portion and in the braided channel earlier we were showing that there are lot of branch channel it is going and in between some sand bars are there now say when this sort of channel flow in full condition when this sort of channel flow in full condition then apparently you do not see this roughness and irregularities in a very uh, clear way but in a dry situation you can see this irregularity that are existing in the channel well but these irregularities will influence the 
value of roughness parameter m. Well, so uh, now say in a braided channel, in a braided channel, for a braided channel means a, if I draw a plan view of the braided channel, say this is a wide channel, streams are coming like this and it is going this way, some streams are going in this way like that and then it is another stream going this way and then this way. So, like that these are say flow direction, these are flow direction and these are some sandbar, sandbar we have well these are again sandbar, <coughs> sandbars. So, uh, like that it is flowing. Now, say for this particular small channel, we can see what is the bed roughness and what is the bed material and that way we can find out what the n value is. For this channel also we can find out, but when this channel will be flowing with a high discharge then all these things will get submerged and the flow may be completely co moving covering these uh, undulations of the bed and these sort of channel irregularities will influence the n value. So, what n value we got for this small channel or this small channel will not be uh, applicable when the channel is moving with a very high discharge covering all these irregularities. So, those irregularities will definitely influence the n value and because of that we need to uh, take care when we compute uniform flow, when we do calculation of uniform flow to know the depth of flow uh, indirectly from the discharge, then we should be aware of all these parameters. I mean some of the parameters already I have discussed beforehand like vegetation and roughness. Well, this is one figure of the braided channel that I have explained right now. So, all this point we need to take care well and then taking consideration taking into consideration all these different factors we need to go for computation of uniform flow well now what we mean by computation of uniform flow okay definitely now we have with us one formula well several a series of formula we have and out of that at least one formula we have Mannings formula which is very popularly used for which formula the n value is known for different material and also we know that these value of n get affected by different conditions, different factors influence this n and how it these affects so that we also know. Now knowing all these things say let us assume that we know the n value, we know the n value for the required material. Then discharge is a given and then we need to know what will be and the, and the sectional size that is the bed width, top width all these things are known. Then our problem in hand is to know what will be the depth of flow. So, by computation of uniform flow we mean determination of flow parameters using resistance formula, determination of flow parameters using resistance formula. Okay. So, <coughs> that determination of flow parameters means again there can be different flow parameters that we can determine. Say for example, of course, the resistance formula is giving us velocity v. And when we talk about computation of uniform flow, we mean that computation of V, computation of Y, these are the resistance flow formula and when our discharge is known, say Q is known and our sectional area is known, section is known, not, not only sectional area, section is known, section is known. So, for a known section, for a known section, for a given discharge, the problem of computing these unknown parameters we call as computation of uniform flow. So, depth, velocity all this we can compute. Well, for that we will be using the very basic equation already we have discussed in detail uh, what is uh, conservation of mass, what is conservation of momentum, 
what is conservation of energy and that conservation of mass lead to the continuity equation and that, that very continuity equation and in case of open channel flow hydraulics, uh, we assume that the, uh, we consider that fluid is incompressible, fluid is incompressible that is rho is not changing, rho is not changing and because of that when we talk about conservation of mass, so when rho is constant. So, mass is nothing but rho into volume. So, we can call conservation of volume also and we deal this as conservation of volume and conservation of volume means we talk about per unit uh, the volume flowing per unit time say q and that q is equal to area into velocity. So, this is our very basic continuity equation. So, we start from that we start from that when we talk about computation of uniform flow. So, continuity equation that is given as q is equal to area into velocity. Okay. Now, this velocity we are talking about the mean velocity. So, we are writing as area is equal to uh, sorry q is equal to area into v m. Well, now this v m for obtaining this value of v m we can write it from the Manning's formula. So, how we can write that q is equal to area into the Manning's formula we can write here 1 by n r to the power 2 by 3 then s to the power half s b because of uniform formula we are writing this as uh, s b s b to the power half well. So, a 1 by n r to the power 2 by 3 s b to the power half. Now, here if we just rewrite it in this form that a into 1 by n then r is nothing but again area divided by perimeter to the power 2 by 3 and s p to the power half. Well, now discharge is known, area is unknown, perimeter is unknown. In fact, now we have expressed this velocity in terms of the geometric parameters of the section that is the area and perimeter cross sectional area and perimeter. So, this area is again it is a function of y which is unknown or as we are talking about uniform flow. So, it is a function of y n then perimeter is also a function of y n if I take a trapezoidal channel if my depth is this much let our depth is y n then our sectional area is this much our perimeter is this much this is our perimeter. But if my y n changes so this is our y n then our sectional area changes and perimeter also changes well. So, that way this area and perimeter are function of y and here also that means this is also a function of y, this is also a function of y, this is also a function of y. Now, if from this expression if it become possible that y we can separate out. Suppose, this y n if we can separate it out then it will be possible to compute directly that y is equal to y is equal to in terms of q and n and s p and some other uh, say some other value like bed width, top width and all. Okay. But if we cannot separate out this y, if we cannot separate out this y, then we may not be able to, it may not be possible to compute this y value directly. So, here is the uh, problem of computing open channel flow. Well, uh, we have seen some of the very fundamentals regarding the uniform flow formula and how this formula is used for computing open channel flow, but the challenges or the problem of overcoming this we need to see and that we will be doing in the next class. So, thank you very much for uh, attending this class and we will be going for the computation of open channel flow in the next class. We have different methods we have different formulas and we will see how we can do that. Thank you very much.